meeting composers is just a real joy. I, I can't believe it's my job. And I interviewed Jennifer uh, back, I think, in 2003 uh, when I was in Las Vegas, Nevada. And it was right as uh, a recording uh, with the Atlanta Symphony uh, was coming out. And we, we talked about that. And I fell in love with one of her chamber pieces. Um, and we got into this great discussion about how uh, she figured out making these sounds on glass uh, with darning needles. And that always stuck in my mind about, uh, and composers are these great people that, that think of these crazy ways. You're gonna hear some, some special techniques today with the piano. Uh, and we're gonna ask her about that and ask the performers about that as well. But I didn't meet Jennifer Hickton in person until November of 2005. I'd been here a couple of months and I, I thought of her immediately when I drove to Philadelphia. I, I moved here in, in June 2005 and I drove to Philly down the Schuylkill and I saw Wissahickon Park. And this was the piece that used the darning needles, the Wickahissen Wicca poetry. And I was just like, oh, wow, this is Jennifer City. Oh, I can't wait to meet her. And so sure enough, I went to a recital of Hilary Hahn um, uh, one uh, afternoon and Jennifer and I had been corresponding and sure enough, she said, oh, well, the, the Philadelphia Orchestra players are rehearsing next door in Pearlman, so come out, we'll, we'll meet at, at intermission. And sure enough, I got to meet Jennifer Higdon, and I remember that day, she was wearing this yellow vest, it was so cool. So I hope you're as excited as I was to meet composer Jennifer Higdon. Hi. I have to say, it's very intimidating to stand back there and see my face over there blown up so big. <laughs> I feel like I should walk over and kind of pose, you know. <laughs> we, but, can, uh, we can set up photos uh, later. I, you know, that, he you know? actually offered a magic marker if I wanted to go over there and draw a little mustache on it. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's so nice to have you here in the Mid-State. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, uh, this is uh, your first time to, to officially to Harrisburg, right? Uh, yeah, it is. Actually, it may actually be the first time. I, uh, I was thinking about that. I, I've been to Lancaster, but I've not, I don't think I've been to Harrisburg. I've driven by on my way to Pittsburgh or when I've taken the turnpike over to Ohio, but I don't believe I've ever stopped. Well, that's something to me that modern composers we hear about Mozart who, you know, would have to pack up the piano with his dad and go off and, and he'd stay over in Prague and be writing. Travel has still become uh, one of the important things to a composer and you probably have to compose on the road, don't you? Yes, actually, I, today I got in about an hour on a piece. I'm doing some revisions uh, that was just premiered with the Philadelphia Orchestra called The Singing Room. So now we have a laptop. Uh, last year when I was in Vienna, we went over to the Opera House and they showed us um, Mahler had been conducting there and he had what they refer to as his laptop and it actually was a little miniature piano that they used to load up in a carriage and carry around with him. He would work on that piano. And I thought, oh, that's really cool. Not too portable though, I noticed it. It was still pretty big. <laughs> you know, I much prefer a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, I wanted to start out, because we're going to hear some great chamber music, I wanted to start with a clip of three of my absolute favorite uh, pieces of yours. Let's hear a little bit of music by Jennifer Higdon.
Let's name that tune. Name those three tunes in 100 notes or less, you know? Yeah, really. 